starting i think Good evening, everyone. How are you doing? And second, let me take this off. Hey, Hello, everyone. How are you? Doing good. Absolutely fine. Great, sir. I'm doing great. Sir. Can you all hear me? Yes, we can. Yeah. Yes, you can. Okay, that's nice. I think there are some people are waiting, so I'll just admit, and then we can start. Vikram, hi. How are you? Good to see you, man. Yeah, Suresh. Hi. <laughs> Why? If, see, I request everyone to put on your cameras. That'll be great. Because uh, it's not. It should not look like a dark movie here. Because they are very scary things. <laughs> so we want everyone to keep it more engaging and interactive. That is what is my request. Uh, today we have very special uh, speaker, uh, our mentor on uh, Brad's webinars. That is just uh, we'll have a detailed uh, introduction from our navigator. That is Urvi Veera. I am just accepting few more. Hi. Titles. Hi, Urvi. Hope you're doing nice. Congratulations, Mumbai extended lockdown Good. and uh, imposed her 144 section in Mumbai. That's Same to you. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, we have very good friends today. Gagandeep. Hi, how are you doing, Gagandeep? All good, all good. How are you all? Very well. Thank you, brother. Gagandeep and uh, myself, we have worked in a lot of campaigns. One of the touch phones launches and all that we have done together. <laughs> Tremendous experience guy. And Vikram, uh, also we have done in some kind of uh, auto shows in Delhi. In Delhi, yes. Delhi and uh, Vikram has always been towards the luxury segment, uh, you know, marketing guy. And today he's part of us to know what Jessica is going to talk about today. Hi, Mehal, Swati, Gaurav, Tawar. Abhijna, your camera is not working today also, low network. Hi. All right. I think we have 36 people. I think we can start with the uh, introduction. Please, over to you, um, Urbi. Thanks, Suresh. Thanks. Uh, hello, all. Good evening. Welcome to today's webinar. Uh, today, we have Ms. Jashnita Dheer with us. She is Head Brand Marketing and CSR for Fortis Healthcare. Welcome, Jashnita. So, before we uh, go on to the webinar, let me just give you a quick brief about her journey uh, till now uh, and what she's going to talk about. So today she's going to speak on long-term initiatives of post-COVID as, as a team, uh, wedding client and agencies. Uh, Jasita started her professional journey as a direct marketing executive with PNG and then moved to frontline sales and frontline sales at Radisson's and Oberoi. Marketing communication, corporate communication, and public relations roles further her career graph at Max Healthcare. And finally, she trans uh, transitioned to a brand, uh, brand and marketing leadership position at Fortis Healthcare. Her strength lies in strategic brand management using consumer insights, product development, and innovation. Integrated marketing, communications, digital transformation, social media management, public relations, and image management. She believes firmly in a higher purpose of existence beyond businesses' performance alone. Lending a voice and a scale to socially relevant cause is something that she's most passionate about. Welcome, Jasu. Over to you. Thank you, Arvi. Thanks a lot. So, um, how many people do we have in total, Suresh? We have uh, 38. 38. Okay. All right. And most of them from Mumbai or from all across the country? We have across, across India. Right. Okay. Great. So uh, everyone in different stages of either lockdown or unlock, right? <laughs> Who are present. <laughs> Great. Okay. okay. 
So uh, people, I'm going to talk to you about, um, you know, as a team, which is both on the client and the agency side, uh, what are going to be the implications, what is going to be the impact post COVID, um, you know, and therefore what is it that we need to be mindful of? Uh, so that's what I'm going to talk to all of you all today. And I'd like to keep it interactive. So um, after every slide, we'll take a pause, you know, we'll talk about it, we'll, we'll invite your uh, sort of suggestions, comments, whatever, some questions to it, and then we'll move forward. Uh, I don't have too many slides. I have about seven slides, but a couple of them are, you know, well populated slides, busy slides. Uh, so after those seven slides, we'll watch a video, uh, which some of you might have, but it's a pretty recent video, which is there. It's, it's a 10, 12 minute video and it kind of sums up uh, both what clients and agencies and brands need to do uh, in the post COVID era as they reimagine their world, as they reposition uh, their brands, uh, and as they refine their purpose. Uh, so we'll end, end with that and then I'll have an open house. So I hope that format works, right? Yeah, yeah, good to go. Good to go. Great. Yeah. So with that, I'll just start sharing my screen and go to my presentation. I think one of the most often asked words these is that can you all see my screen? Yes, yes, yes. In 2020, it is going down. <laughs> spoken, often spoken dialogue. Right. Absolutely perfect. Absolutely perfect. All right. Okay. So um, let's just, you know, um, this is, so obviously my reference material, you know, before we begin is, uh, it's a lot in terms of my experience of working with agencies. Uh, it's my experience of what I've heard from my agency partners, okay, and we work with quite a few in this uh, quarter. Uh, my conversations with ex-agencies, you know, who are uh, colleagues and friends. So, yeah, sorry. So, uh, you know, so this is, so this is a first-hand information. Uh, this is also anecdotal information, but is also some bit of research. So, you know, it's all of that put together that I've put in here. So I think this, the first one is from the World Economic Forum, which is that COVID-19 is changing consumer behavior. Because it is changing consumer behavior, therefore advertising is changing, therefore marketing is changing, and therefore this dynamic and this relationship between client and agency and that new equilibrium that we have to find is changing. I think so, first of all, we've got to understand because the why of things is very important as to why it is happening, right? Here is a WEF graph, which I hope all of you can see, which says that advertising spend is falling in all key markets and across most channels, right? Uh, why it doesn't have India yet, and there are some India-based studies as well, but you know, in WEF is because I think they started tracking it from the start of the virus. And we know that the pandemic started uh, from China. It's done the round in Europe. US before it sort of, you know, hit India in a big way. So I think they've covered those markets uh, before India, but soon we will have the India related, you know, uh, data also being verified by the World Economic Forum. And this is no, uh, you know, uh, secret that the markets which are digital first, so markets which earlier made the transition to digital earlier on, right, that it is one thing that when a pandemic has hit you, to then start thinking digital, to then do jugad, you know, the traditional Indian way. It's another thing to be digitally oriented, right? So, and, and I think that is primarily the difference between China and India when we talk about even at a country level, right? Uh, so digital first markets, they are better positioned to withstand the long-term effects of the pandemic. And the ones which have made the shift, you know, I mean, which, 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 have, which have just metamorphed now and not done a slow transition, you know, which didn't allow that, they are not so well poised to be able to withstand the effects of the pandemic so well, uh, which means that they'll have to do something very quickly now uh, you know, in the aftermath of the crisis before uh, the new normal sort of sets in. I've also put a quote by Unilever that, uh, you know, where, uh, and what Kony Brands here says, you know, if you look at it, one way of looking at this quote could be that nothing has changed. But another way of looking, my, my takeaway that I'd like you to take from this is that at the, at the core, the principles are not going to change. You know, the core and the principles are going to remain the same, whether it's pre-pandemic or post-pandemic. 
What changes really is your medium? What changes really is your ecosystem? What changes really is the new dynamic and the new methods that you employ, the new media that you do? Those are the kind of things that change. But the core of you know wanting to know your consumer what your purpose is as a brand, uh, you know, having a connect and having an insight into consumer psyche, et cetera, uh, learning from the real time dip into what your consumer is telling you. I think that is not going to change. And this is a part which is played both by the clients as well as the agencies, because clients are dependent on agencies to be able to provide those tools and the information. And agencies in the new, uh, you know, normal have to figure out that how do they help the clients navigate through this crisis. So therefore, in finding this universe, both clients and agencies have to work together as a team. So this, I thought that, you know, that let's understand that because consumer behavior is changing, therefore this entire landscape is changing and definitely it is going to impact us in the short to the midterm. With this, I just wanted to set the context. Uh, also, if you look at the sectoral impact, you know, um, all almost all brand categories are you know impacted by covid so uh, in one context if you say then there are some categories which have also seen a sort of an uptick and an upswing and those categories we know is you know ott content or let's say uh, you know dishwashers as a category for instance you know when the lockdown was there uh, you know uh, computers laptops devices uh, data all of that, while they have seen an upswing, upswing and a sort of an uptake, but most big sectors have been impacted. And this again is no uh, secret, but it just puts some number and some perspective to it that travel and tourism, uh, you know, for airlines, restaurants being the worst hit, also retail brick and mortar. Automotive industry, we've been hearing, we've been reading the results which have been posted by Tata Motors and all other uh, big automotive companies. And then, of course, apparel and fashion. Uh, you know, Zara has just made this um, uh, public announcement saying that uh, they are going to shut about 25% of their retail centers. Uh, so, apparel and fashion. Now, these, wh why is this important? Travel and tourism is a big advertising industry, if you look at it, right? Uh, one of the biggest campaigns that any country which depends on travel and tourism that they do is their country tourism campaign. You know, think about the Incredible India campaign, right? And think about all those Visit Singapore or Malaysia, Truly Asia. Think about all those campaigns, right? So there's a whole lot of advertising that goes into it. There is a whole lot of media spend that goes into it. There's a whole lot of effort, both on the client and the agency side that goes into it. And those kind of big ticket things are not going to happen, at least not in the short run, right? Not till these industries are back uh, you know, on their feet back, back again. So therefore, this is going to be the impact and these are going to be the tremors uh, in these sectors, at least that we are, we felt and we are going to feel in the short to the midterm. Um, am I going too fast? Is it making sense? Would you want me to shift gears? A very quick sense check before I go forward. No, no, no it's absolutely perfect. Yeah? Yeah. Okay. All right. Uh, okay, so let's come to, before we go to the long term, of course, uh, there is a short term impact, there is a midterm impact, and then there is a long term impact. Let's just talk about the short to the midterm impact. And here I'll bring in the personal experience as well. Uh, in April, I have had a conversation with almost all of my agencies to say that you'll have to reduce your fee for quarter one and for quarter two. Uh, that's a conversation that I've personally had with most agencies. And uh, this is where teamwork comes in. Not, not one of the agencies, although it is a very difficult decision for them, have come forth and said that, no, 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 we can't do this and whatever. And so far, at least at Touchwood, most of them have been able to retain their workforce as well. Uh, but the picture is not so hunky and dory everywhere. Uh, in the short term, we are seeing that 75% of the brands have reduced their investments in April. Uh, agencies have lost between 54 and 91 percent of their billing in April 2020. This is again the World Economic Forum data that they've put together. Um, and the impact of COVID that we feel on the whole advertising sector and advertising, of course, it will have all agencies coming in, whether it's the digital marketing agencies or the content or the creative, you know, so it's a 
it's, it's a broad term that we've used here. So really say all marketing agencies, it's going to result in a 30% decrease in advertising investments that happen over a period of time. And all forms of media are affected. Uh, you know, there is a fall that you see in some a more steep fall, for instance, in out of home, and in some not such a sharp fall, uh, such as the social networks, because obviously consumption is up in those uh, networks, etc. And therefore, on the agency side, uh, while brands are grappling with that, what's happening with the brands we just saw in the earlier slide, what's happening to the sectors, we just saw the first two slides, you know, what's happening on, uh, on the brand side. And therefore, there is a decline in the agency revenue as well. And many of them, you know, Densu had uh, WPP group, uh, a lot of these groups had, uh, you know, in the ad agency, if you go through the press releases, you'll get to know that they have already announced cost saving measures, including temporary unemployment, which actually is going to come, uh, you know, it's not going to hold them in good stead, whichever agencies have done that. Uh, because when you get back on your feet, and when you have to with one day, the economy will be resurgent, right, we have that hope. When you're resurgent, when you're in that resurgent mode, when you're out of your recession, at that time, they will find that they don't have enough people or they don't have the right skill set to be able to uh, sort of facilitate and enable that change, you know, that, that, that transition when that happens. So I think it is a very short term uh, measure, but it is happening. And we cannot just, you know, like an ostrich bury our head in the sand and say, no, this is not happening. There are three scenarios uh, which are there. Uh, of why investments have stopped, right? Like I said, I, I'm a great believer in, you know, Simon uh, Sinek's uh, why. You, you have to get to the why of things before the what of things. So one is that advertising investments have stopped because like I just mentioned, uh, my segue into this was for the wrong reasons, you know, which has been dictated by senior management or it is dictated by very short term uh, liquidity, cash flow concerns, and therefore saying, you know, just uh, do away with people. And that leads to retrenchment and all of that. Then there is a, a halt that happens in advertising for good reasons, and, and that is that your media no longer exists. For instance, if you were doing it in in-flight magazines or campaigns that are, are not, uh, you know, to date, uh, or, which means that, let's say, um, you're talking about a tourism campaign or you're talking about a, like a Visit Kerala campaign. You know, you, you can't talk about it right now. So, so those kind of things are which either they're out of sync or that media does not exist. Now that is stopping it for the right reasons. And the third is that there is no halt in investments. And like I mentioned that one third of the brands have not stopped advertising and they've taken the right decision and they've continued because they're either still operational, think Zomato, think Swiggy, think that entire category, you know, of food retailers, et cetera, think Amazon. Uh, or they're no longer functional, but they've adapted to a messaging uh, to the new context, which is a whole lot of people which were perhaps not, you know, they were not selling their wares, their product or their service, but they started doing a whole lot of public interest messaging. They started doing a whole lot of messaging saying, you know, hailing the national uh, workers, the essential workers, etc., who were helping during the pandemic, right? Uh, so so these are, this is a short, to, short term impact that we spoke first. Second, we spoke about scenarios, you know, which make sense, uh, which we are seeing playing out in front of us, you know, from the wrong, from the not the right reasons to the right reasons to, you know, uh, of not, no change, uh, kind of a status quo. And in the medium term, you know, on the agency side, you know, in the agency client relationship, what are the kind of things that, you know, I foresee, and this is something that I have put together, uh, basis my uh, you know feel my my intuitive feel and my conversations like I said it anecdotal with people. 2021 I feel is going to be the year of streamlining. Okay, so 2020 has been a year of oh my god what happened, and trying to change the wheels of the car while the car is still moving, because let's be honest nobody knew what hit us. Nobody saw this coming. Nobody knew what hit us. So everyone was chasing the tail of the pandemic. Some better some far behind. Uh, 2021 is going to be in agency client relationship in brand world going to be the year of streamlining and streamlining of first the skills because you know uh, when we think streamlining we think very operational things we think things like tools that you know agencies use a lot of tools let's just streamline that because clients might not need it and because it costs a ton of money and because perhaps we don't need to do so many things going forward because the pandemic has told us what works what doesn't work we know the ROI we 
know, digital, mobile first, what we need to do. And therefore, we need tools only for that, you know. Th that is the mindset of, of a few people uh, that I've interacted with. But streamlining of tools makes no sense if we do not proceed it with streamlining of skills. So first, the skill set needs to be streamlined and then the tools and all other things. So 2021 is really going to be a real year of calibration and recalibration. That's that's how I see, uh, you know, uh, as you can see from the short to the mid, now we are moving towards the long term. The second is, uh, you know, uh, most agencies, um, and I say that with some indulgence right here, that, uh, I mean, they love their fancy equipment to say, you know, this has to be shot on this SLR, and no, it's made for the big screen, no, but it'll pixelate this picture, and no, we need that. Equipment. I think those are days of the past for a whole lot of brands and for a whole lot of clients, okay? The clients that we just saw, the 75%, et cetera. Uh, it is going to be now handheld devices and it is going to be uh, all hail the rise of user generated content, right? Uh, what the users are saying, curating that content, repurposing that content and finding your purpose through that content, your voice through the voice of the consumer is going to be what brands, clients, and agencies are going to uh, find a lot of their time in and a lot of their bang for their buck in. So I think those days of those fancy, uh, whatever number of crore kind of shoots and those kind of budgets are over for a whole lot of brands, you know, at least in the mid uh, term, mid to the long term for a uh, number of brands that I see, uh, the categories that we just spoke of. Of course, travel shoots and stay curtailments are there, you know, uh, to, to be there again, because the third point is related to the second point. Um, right now, a whole lot of advertising and a whole lot of uh, agency time also goes into agency interest, also goes into these mega sporting events um, and the ad tech gatherings that happen. So the Khan lines has been called off, as we know that earlier it was pushed from June to October, and now that event has been called off, right? Uh, we are right now seeing that there's football, soccer, all those events happening to empty stadiums, right? Uh, so therefore these, you know, till the fate of all these things hangs in balance, again, there are no big bucks to be made there. Again, there are a lot of brands are going to shy away because if the consumer is not there, if the consumer, if the captive audience is not there, you know, that's the point. If it's no longer captive there, then why would they spend the very meager budgets that they have now? You know, today you have to make your dollar or your rupee work that much more harder. And that's true for almost every brand. Uh, the next is that, you know, the uh, agencies are also very, very dependent on the physical presence of their workforce in offices, right? So it's, it's, it's this thing of working together, jamming together, coming up with an idea together, the so-called sutta breaks, which are supposed to be very creative breaks and so have, whatever have you. Uh, you know, that is, I think, uh, going to, of course, change. Uh, that, I think, is going to be trend of the past. And link it with what we saw earlier of real estate being the second most hit industry and within real estate if we see the commercial workspaces being uh, you know hit and that's across the world even in India um, you know you don't need those offices if people can work you know, right now the trend is work from home uh, how I see that changing uh, in both the client and the agency side both of them together is work from anywhere we are now going to shift from work from home to work from anywhere uh, and, and the last that I have here is that, you know, all these talk that we had so far, the way our brains were wired to say that, oh my God, you need to see the agency client dynamics and chemistry, which is there in a pitch meeting, right? Now that chemistry is going to be through a virtual channel and it's going to happen over Skype or Zoom, right? So these are the shifts which are we are seeing. And these are not, uh, you know, a lot of people also say that, uh, that these shifts are perhaps temporary. Uh, I, for one thing, that is going to be slightly more permanent. And that is because, you know, if, if you look at it, um, uh, according to a lot of disease epi epidemiologists, we are not going to see the peak of uh, the pandemic in India till about October, November. And a whole lot of scientists also feel that, you know, the some sort of social distancing is there to stay till 2022. So if there is going to be some bit of social distancing, which is going to be around to 2022, uh, and, and, you know, the virus, you know, you're going to have a second wave or a third wave, like we are seeing in Taiwan, like we're seeing in South Korea, like we're seeing in 
uh, Korea, uh, sorry, China from where it started, uh, you know, if that is going to happen, if the vaccine is going to take some time to come in, which is not till end of this year or early next year, if it is going to be further more time till more and more people are vaccinated at a mass level and, and, and then only herd immunity comes by, uh, all of this is going to take time. And if all of this is going to take time, then these uh, changes that we talk about are not going to go away anytime in a hurry. It is going to be our new normal. Uh, and, and the earlier that clients and agencies uh, sort of, you know, tune into this and get into this rhythm, you know, the client agency rhythm that we talk about, uh, the better it is uh, for, for everyone, right? Uh, because once we've been disrupted, we can be disrupted again. But these are disruptions that we can work towards avoiding. I think I'll just take a pause here because I'm done with at least half of my slides. Maybe just go back for a couple of minutes and, uh, you know, I'll pause the share here. Um, okay. All right. So how's it going so far? Still on sharing. Uh. Still sharing? I said pause share. It's not happened. No, you need to... Yeah, better. Yeah, yeah. No, no. Pause share. Yeah. So, um, any questions so far? Any decisions so far? Any different point of view so far? I'd really like to hear before we go back to the deck. Uh, hi, uh, ma'am. This is Abhishek. Abhishek Laha hi, Abhishek. Uh, from Bangalore. Hi. Uh, just hi. I uh, just wanted to know. See, as you said, uh, that the the agency and the client relationship is is now in a pause mode right now during the pandemic so uh, as i can see we all can see that advertising and the media uh, platforms are changing right now because of the pandemic thing it's all going from a physical uh, place to a digital format whether yeah. and you you also mentioned that you know everything is shifting to handheld uh, devices so uh, i just wanted to know that you know how uh, ad agency works like they work on all the platforms like, you want to know whether ad agencies work on all the platforms or not. That's what your question yes, is? Yes. Okay. Yes, so, that is part of the question. Okay, that's question. All right, go ahead. Complete your question. Yeah. Then. Yeah. And I just also wanted to know that how uh, ad agencies can modify themselves among their own uh, ecosystem and, you know, come up with, uh, are they are coming up with, uh, you know, uh, new solutions as per the situation right now? Right. And another part is, another part is, uh, what we can do. What are the kind of industries where this digital marketing may not work as, as a physical uh, or a banner ad or a newspaper ad work? I just wanted to know those examples also. Right. Which industry where digital marketing doesn't work? Right. So let's come to the uh, let's come to the first part of the question, which is uh, how are ad agencies structured? Do they work on all platforms, all formats, yes. or restricted in some? Right. Uh, see, you're uh, a full scale ad agency, you know, which would be one of the, let's say the top ten or the top twenty. Have several silos in between. This is how it is structured, you know. Whether you talk about the Leo Burnett Group, or you talk about the Publicity Group, or you talk about ours, or whatever, right? They have several silos in between. This is how most of the agencies were working because uh, while they say that they're integrated, but they aren't really integrated, you know, they, and, and, and anyone who's worked on the client side would tell you that, right? And anybody who's made the shift from the client to the agency side will <laughs> kind of, you know, reiterate that. So uh, there are several silos. You have a digital cell, you'll have an activation cell, you'll have a media cell, you'll have a, you know, celebrity management, you'll have sport. So you'll have those silos, okay. right? But the servicing person and the team which is on the brand, right, is really the one which is going to be the dominant media for that. So for instance, if you're a Coke, you know, then your yeah. agency servicing person is going to be somebody who makes films because you need very 12 films to be made. You know, you, you need a film for summer and you need a film for Limca and you need a film for this or you need a film for that, whatever your brands are. Okay. Coke, right? So it's like that, right? or an uber okay then of course your serving person servicing person is to be somebody who understands social media really well, okay, and within that mobile and somebody you know who can make those 10 second videos who understands the video performance metrics etc etc so this is how it usually works 
Okay. That obviously, the person or the team on the account will have dominant skill set for which your dominant media you're going to use, which makes sense to you. Okay. And whenever you dip into any other, you know, so for instance, that. Um, if you have to do research, then obviously you have a research wing and a research person will come in, you know, and, and then they go back. So this is okay. Then if you come to uh, specific agencies, which are now the world of digital agencies, okay, within digital agencies, you have a website and you've got social media and you have, you know, reputation management, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So it's very, very niche, right? So the world of okay. marketing agencies, like I said, is divided into a full stack, full scale, okay, which are generalists with multiple silos very specific okay. saying i do online reputation management i do only that and i'm bloody good at that okay so how uh, the world is um, how it is going to change of like i said is you'll have to break down those silos okay you because, because those silos no longer make any sense and you cannot afford yes. to keep those yes. silos. So, and, and yes which is why the bigger agencies, the bigger titans of uh, the, the industry are finding it tougher than the smaller agencies, which are more nimble, which are more agile on their feet, which don't have yes. why they respond yeah. to it better. The second part of the question for that, we'll have to go back to the deck because you know the la next two, three slides that I have are actually talking about the specifics that agencies can do. You know, you said what they can do. So that, I mean, yes. Okay. And after those, right. I come back to you again, I'm sure to say that, uh, did, I mean, was the question answered or not, right? All right. What part of your question is that, uh, which are those industries where digital might not work, where you will definitely, yes. et cetera, right? Yes. You know, I'll just take a step back, right? Uh, I'm in healthcare now. I'm in healthcare marketing uh, for the last 14 years, right? Uh, one year back, two year back, let's say there's a healthcare marketing conference happening, and somebody said that uh, doctors would be able to create doctors would be able to treat patients without touching them, without checking their pulse, without checking their temperature. Okay, through a remote medium, and I think all of us marketeers would have scoffed at that idea and said, "Listen, that's not possible. What are you saying?" Okay, and yet look at us. in the last three months. <laughs> healthcare and telemedicine, right? It's where right. you to treat patients without even so much as touching a scalpel or a stethoscope to them. Yes, yes. I'm not yes. talking about a brand, I'm talking about a category level, right? So mm -hmm. with this, you know, I am I'm leaving you with a question. Okay. I'm saying that think about it that so far whatever we thought is not possible and it just doesn't make sense, right? Uh, those changes and those shifts have happened in the last three months. Okay, so I think we need to sort of allow ourselves time for the newish technology, etc., to come in and set the uh, you know era of uh, consumer and, and then maybe come to a conclusion. And say, uh, while we tried the pre-COVID era, we've tried the post-COVID, and now we can come to a conclusion because right now I feel the jury is out. Uh, as to which industries it might still not work because I just give you a lot ah. of how correct, it correct. could work and it's working. It's working. Perfectly. Yes, that's right? yes, that's true. So we, we can conclude in this way in the last question that you know there is uh, there is no such uh, industry or a company or uh, area where digital format might not work or might work. We cannot say if if there is requirement we can we have to find out new ways. We cannot say with certainty that it will not work, okay. but we have to try it because many places where it didn't work, it is working now. So we need to give ourselves and the medium that chance before we come to a conclusion, right? Thanks, right, everybody. Right, right. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else? Ekta, Ashwin, whoever? Hi. Hi. Uh, hi, my name is Ekta. I would like to ask you one question. Like sure. uh, in foreign, basically tourism, uh, like many companies are going on virtual experience they are coming up with different packages and they are telling consumer uh, that we will provide you uh, uh, whatever place you want to visit you can but through virtual or digital uh, theater so yeah. it, india is also trying to do something different on it because already you told like uh, travel has impacted 68.68% so how it will help uh, indian to ca capture in this 
pandemic um so yeah one is that yes even indian companies are trying something like that if you speak to the big uh, you know travel agencies etc if you speak to those uh, uh, agencies which make those you know packages of the golden quad related etc etc you know are trying to now uh give a glimpse to people virtually etc and trying to make some bespoke experiences etc they are trying they they are trying uh again i i it all needs to be seen that how willing is the consumer to bite the bullet on this one okay because it is one thing to see the experience it's it's quite another to live the experience right and the whole experiential category which was there of brands you know it's called experiential for a reason कि भाई आप उसको एक्सपीरियंस करते हो देखते नहीं हो सुनते नहीं हो यू नो ऑल योर सेंसेस ऑल योर फाइव सेंसेस कम यू नो आर इन टैंडम एंड देन यू एक्सपीरियंस इट एंड देन यू रीकाउंट योर एक्सपीरियंस सो हाउ विल द होल एक्सपीरियंशियल कैटेगरी सॉर्ट ऑफ अडॉप्ट अडेप्ट टू दिस इज इज वेरी टफ यू नो सो लाइक अभिषेक वॉज जस्ट टॉकिंग अबाउट इट यू नो दिस इज वन ऑफ दोज थिंग वेयर यू नो अ बिग डिस्ट्रप्शन विल हैव टू कम और अ बिग माइंड सेट शिफ्ट विल हैव टू कम बिकॉज दिस इज द one of the tougher uh, kind of uh, nuts to crack as to how it will happen but yes some indian brands are also trying that thank you okay. all right so perhaps we'll go back to more questions uh, later again i'll share my screen and we'll finish the rest of the presentation all right can you see my screen again yeah yeah Okay. Yes, we can. Good. So, um, to Abhishek's question and to maybe many others that I'm trying to preempt, um, what are the long-term strategies in the post-COVID world? What are the actual changes that people can do on the client and the agency side, which will need to be done? Right. I think the first is um, aim for survival and resilience before economic efficiency. I think that is first thing that has to be done because uh, all of this makes sense if you are alive. Uh, Nobody is going to write a case study of a dead brand or a brand that perished. Okay, so uh, surviving uh, is 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 important. Survival is important before uh, the whole efficiency conversation sort of kicks in. Uh, so contingency planning therefore has to be built into every link of the value chain. Uh, to ensure the survival right earlier uh, if when we used to do negotiations etc for client agency everything you know you you're always thinking who's getting the better end of the deal you know if the agency has got a better end of the deal they feel yes is client se to main kafi paisa kama liya you know now i'll pay for whatever whatever the clients able to you know crack a very good deal they're like okay i'm done for this year i've met my kpi i've met my target and i've done whatever right so i think that has to change from the question which earlier both clients and agencies were thinking is what's in it for me in this partnership in this relationship it has to change to what if what if this happens what if that happens what if a covid-19 kind of an event were to rehappen reoccur what if another disruption is on the way will this client agency relationship and what it delivers to the brand because ultimately every relationship is aimed at something right whatever value it delivers for the brand will it withstand that or not so therefore our alliances that we are going to be we are going to be the choice of alliances is going to become far more strategic uh, than being transactional than being about this negotiation and you know how much what's in it for me what's the benefit for it so i think that is a big shift that from what's in it for me to what if this happens will it stand the test of time and it might be necessary to forego some very good deals in favor of those that you know if 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 the client agency relationship is in such a way that it can withstand a missed uh, delivery of goods or a delayed payment because this this is the truth this is happening it's i mean anyone on the client and the agency side will tell you that they are defaulting right now you know i mean not in the long run but in the short run and therefore this is is very important you know building in resilience i think that's the first thing that has to happen because survival before everything else once you are able to survive then obviously we can talk about other things the other is uh 
clients for the agency people uh, and, and agencies for agency people who are working, we have to prioritize people's uh, safety in the short to midterm and their welfare in the long term uh, and a continuous engagement, okay? because that is the downtime of this uh, of this virtually connected world. Uh, this the, the point that I made that from work from home to work from anywhere, the point that I was making, uh, the problem with that is, uh, is the burnout is faster. Uh, the thing that you have to then look at is that you have to very, very carefully plan the downtime of the people, you know, so like, because there is no off when you're working from home, there is no off, you know, I mean, at least in some industries, the essential services sector, whether it is food retail, or it is healthcare. I mean, I can certainly talk about the essential services sector. There is no off time. Your phone is ringing at seven in the morning. There could be an emergency on Saturday, Sunday night, what have you. But the people who are working on that, they're not machines, they cannot, they're not wired, they, they cannot take that sort of pressure on a long term basis. And therefore, how do you ensure that is by, by doing a downtime planning. And I think here, I can take example of again, a few companies that I know, a Flipkart, so have a few colleagues, you know, ex-colleagues who are working there. Uh, what Flipkart does, I mean, a couple of things is that uh, 1 to 2 p.m., you know, while their entire workforce is working from home, they block the calendar of all the Flipkart employees from 1 to 2, which means nobody external can block your calendar from 1 to 2. So 1 to 2 is your downtime, right? Uh, or on Fridays, there is this uh, sort of a rule that you cannot do any internal meetings. So Friday is no internal meeting day. You know? So Friday is a bit of a, you know, any other activity, but not a meeting sort of a day. So, so no client agency meeting, something like that. These are very small, but very effective measures when you have to do over a period of time to ensure that people get the downtime that they need. And finally, uh, pandemic, or working from home or this new normal because we haven't lived this way because uh, because human being is a creature of habit we are all a creature of habit and and to unlearn those habits and to new habits it is going to be uh, difficult and tough therefore checking in into the mental health of the individuals is very very important okay scheduling some zoom meetings which are only going to be you have your chai or your coffee or whatever beverage you have in the evening and just talk inanities and not talk work and not talk miss timeline and not talk and, and don't end it by saying but wo ab creative ab bhej doge na? Matlab, time pe aa na. So, so not that okay i think that's extremely important that we do this and this is a single because and why is it important just because this is a people intensive business you know in this tools and everything comes later it's actually a human to human connect so it is so essential so i think that's the second thing that we have to sort of uh, you know work towards both clients and agencies the third is of course we have to reshape strategy for business continuity. And while this is more on the client side, but agencies have to obviously support that and help them navigate into this, right? Because let's say uh, the, the planning wing of most agencies is what? That will help you decode your brand, will help you decode and get to your DNA, right? And in the new uh, way, even the client is, uh, is, is, is meandering through this desert and trying to find the new equilibrium, uh, agencies have to help na navigate that. So how do you reshape strategy for business continuity? I think once the outbreak is controlled, which is whenever it is, um, companies, they would, all brands would want to review and renew their business continuity plans, okay? Because if there's one thing that people till last year had never, had never come, you had it somewhere, you had it lying in a PPT, it was discussed in some board meeting, but it will never put to test was business continuity plans. And now everyone's business continuity plans have come, uh, you know, into a test, a real test. So uh, brands would want to reassess how their business continuity plans are working. And if there are any shortfalls, which this pandemic would have told, right? You would want to identify, do a root cause analysis, you would want to see whether you know there is timeliness of action that you're lacking on okay or it's infrastructure that you don't have to help people let's say work from home etc or you have workforce shortages right uh, or there are any external environmental issues like regulatory issues or anything right then the brands would want to consider putting new internal guidelines in place and based on the lessons that you've learned during the pandemic, you know, when the business continuity plans have been put to test, there are some solid and new contingency plans to build resilience and better respond to the future crisis. And of course, the agency has to fit into this new normal and help them navigate into that. And fourth, uh, you know, build resilience in preparation for the new normal because 
these kind of events are, are going to reoccur. Uh, the, the WHO chief has said that the coronavirus might never go away. It, it will just become a part of the virus pool that we have, like HIV. HIV never left us when it came, right? When it came to the fore in late 80s, early 90s in India, Africa, it happened earlier in 80s and um, the US. But uh, it, it might just never leave it. So you could, we could very well get disrupted again and only resilient organizations would be able to do that. So I don't think, uh, you know, uh, consciously many organizations, and I speak for a majority, were, work, were preparing for the worst, were preparing for resilience, were preparing for adversity. So I think this preparing for adversity and, and being, you know, building resilience is going to be something that both clients and agencies will have to do. So these are uh, some of the things. I'll, I'll move to the next one. This is continued. Um, I just want to interrupt, uh, just Shita. Yes. Uh, so here you're talking about a recontinuation of the business plan. Great. You know, we just had a news saying that uh, Rolls Royce in the month of March, you know, mm. they tied up with uh, IIT Madras because they are looking at, you know, very bigger level kind of a research. Uh, which is which is needed for automation industry and they're the leaders world leaders so do brands have such kind of because now you required any recontinuation you required huge research Correct. Absolutely. and, uh, and in, in in us or in europe if you see 90 percent of any organizations for their research they go to universities but Correct. in india they are just relying on their own uh, you know, organizational uh, research, which is not sufficient, which has been proved. Uh, so a Rolls Royce kind of a company also, and several organizations are tying up with uh, institutions. Like, hmm. you know, likewise, we have several numbers. So, uh, uh, you know, as students are here, so I just want to put across this question. Do brands have such kind of strategy uh, to tie up with any kind of institution for their research? Because anyways, you know, it, it comes with a lot of clause in, in clauses. So do, do the brands are actually looking at or, you know, it, this can be appeal also to brands uh, from our, you know, brats because we are looking at brands and, you know, uh, institutional academy tie-ups. That is what we are looking at because this is the right opportunity for organizations also as well as institutions uh, to do a kind of a collaboration to come out with very, very, uh, you know, accurate kind of a data to create to help the recontinuation business plan. So Correct. that is one thing which I would like to know if if the plans has and definitely there's, there can be great revolution in terms of types and the research point of view. Right. So uh, in, in bits and pieces, uh, Suresh, you know, it is happening. But of course, uh, you know, our structures not just as developed, like you mentioned, uh, you know, uh, as it is there in the West. But in bits and pieces, it is happening. So, for instance, I can talk about one that I'm aware of uh, with IIT Madras. You know, there is a tie up that's happening to say that how can we start reusing the masks which are there? Because right now there is one pandemic that we are dealing with. And definitely we are creating a medical waste problem, which is going to be there. You know, the usage of plastic single-use plastic and all that has gone up, we are aware. All these uh, chemicals which are, you know, with sprays and disinfectants and with sanitizers, etc., which is going into the environment and all the disposable personal protective equipment and masks, etc., which is there, right? So therefore, there's already with IIT Madras this um, uh, research happening, you know, with some brands, etc., doing, saying that how can you uh, reuse these masks using UV filter, etc. And therefore, you know, that problem of waste, you know, uh, would, would be, uh, uh, you know, so, so that you prevent another pandemic from coming, right? So that is there. Uh, again, uh, you know, some uh, MNC brands, which are also based out of India, you know, are lazing with some universities, etc. But again, it's happening in bits and pieces. Uh, at at a you know at a, at a industry level, uh, you know those tie ups are few and far between. Uh, but in the spirit of collaboration, like I was talking about, that whether it's an agency side that these silos have to break, and this collaboration is something that we have to work on. Uh, definitely, you know, if if brats or agencies, uh, you know, such as yours, can take this forward, uh, it 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 is it will be a big service that we do to you know uh, uh, to the country as a whole. 
Great. Um, so that let's come to the uh, you know specific strategies. So from the broad based, I now you know uh, from a bike base, I now sort of narrow it down to specifics. Um, there is something that I, at the end of this, like I said, I'll show you a video. So there is a word that will keep coming there again and again, and that word is agility. A lot of behavioral scientists uh, are saying that one of the big things which is going to be make or break post-COVID behavior for organizations, for people, and therefore for brands and agencies, both alike, is going to be agility, you know, agility and in, in response. Uh, so, there, so one of the things that definitely agencies, but also clients have to uh, adopt is a startup mindset. How's a startup mindset different from another? The startup mindset it biases action over research and testing over analysis. So it's not that, you know, here is something I analyze and then I predict, no, test it, test it and then tell, you know. It, it pretty much in the same way as, uh, you know, behavioral economics is different from traditional economics because a traditional economics will say that uh, this is a constant, that is a constant, and, you know, this is how it will happen, it will predict. Behavioral economics says no, just test it with a group of people. And then let's see whether that hypothesis is true or not, right? So just taking that analogy to be able to say that the startup mindset, you know, what do startup uh, people do? There is a very agile cadence that they have of daily team check-ins, 30 minute CEO kind of reviews. And then- uh, and I think, yeah bi-weekly, you know, hour long, deep dives, etc. I think this is what we'll have to do, break down our goals into smaller things and follow this kind of a mindset and this kind of a cadence. That's number one. Okay. Second, again, I think uh, I, I said that earlier and again that, you know, at the core to drive rapid action, it has to, it has to be built around people around what works best for people. So we have to enable people with new set of skills, new set of capabilities. So the reskilling, retraining is a very big conversation, you know, and, and we haven't even started talking about it, this whole reskilling and retraining conversation uh, from, from giving people technology to, if people have to work remotely all along, then, you know, are we, are, are we helping them with Wi-Fi? Are we helping them with ergonomic chairs that they have to work in? You know, are, are we giving all those things? Are we thinking on those lines, etc.? for both clients and agencies because uh, you know surely they can't be working for six months you know uh, it, it's just sitting in their uh, uh, dining table chair you know not possible or couched on a sofa or from the bed right so things like that have to be worked out uh, accelerating digital technology and analytics is going to become very very important uh, this is becoming like a cliche again and again that the crisis you know you've heard it many times and today also that that the crisis has become an inflection point in the shift to digital but the best companies are moving quickly and enhancing and expanding their digital channels okay they're using advanced analytics to combine new and innovative sources of data with their own insights to derive recovery signals. Okay, so they are able to tell that if this is coming back, then that is a sign of recovery. You know, so this is like, like the first shoots of recovery at this, and this is all data driven, data insights driven. Again, uh, I think what uh, agencies and clients can do is create capacity to address the customer service volumes because also what's going to happen post the pandemic, once the consumption is going to start, right now consumption is in a pause. Right. When you when consumers get out of the recession mindset and get into a consumption mode, uh, then suddenly the volumes of are going to, uh, you know, jack up when those volumes are amped up. You have to be able to create some templates and distribute through all your digital media channels to frequently asked questions. You know, so those are there, whether, whether you use chatbots, etc., whatever you use, FAQ bots that information is up there, you know. Then you have to create some reactive scripts for your customer service people for one-on-one -on -one interactions, which don't fall into these templatized 70, 80% of the responses or FAQs. And finally, then you have to train your qualified team members in functions which have lower volume to help manage, you know, demand from functions where the customer service channel are having a huge. And again, this is something which agencies can help. Let's say, uh, let's take a specific example. If it is not really a planning person's job, so it's not be planner sort of planning karega, you know, buyer sort of buying karega. No, at this time, 
if you need the agency people to be able to do that, and those are the people who should be answering queries, etc. You know, just when uh, uh, economy is in a consumption mode and when uh, more units of the brand are being sold or the service being sold, etc. So I think this is a very specific example that I had on it. Uh, ramping up digital delivery. So, you know, ramp up the capacity for online transactions and digital in interactions. I already took the example of telemedicine, right? That telemedicine uh, should be able to, and it has replaced routine doctor visits, right? Or online learning for million of students. I mean, who would have said that children could just be learning online? You know, there was a six months back, we were telling children, don't look into screens so much. And today, all they have is the screen to look at to be able to, you know, uh, get in information. That's the only way that in education is being imparted. So as you enable your digital options, think video, think more voice, think vernacular, you know, uh, do all of that and yet plan for a scenario that in some industries, you know, whether it is hospitality, whether it is airlines, whether it is healthcare, whether it is education, some people, maybe the elderly, uh, would still need an empathetic human voice if it is required and you should be prepared to offer it you know so while digital will have that role to play i think at the background that option should always be there okay and that is something that uh, brands have to do and agencies have to uh, translate that into reality and finally um, this is the truth uh, the marketing budget is getting optimized right and 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 that's a function so it's not just the advertising spends but everything the cost of acquiring business has to come down the non, uh, you know, crucial, non-essential uh, activities have to, uh, you know, go on a pause mode or a back burner for a couple of years. And you have to prioritize your spending. Every department has to do it, right? But the only thing that I would say where, again, uh, clients and agencies should get into a dialogue, should get into workshops and arrive at that is that avoid the cross across the board cuts, you know, blanket bans do not help. Instead, look for ways to drive efficiency, for example, by looking for overlap in agencies, you know, so for instance, um, you know, if you're not going to be buying too much media in that particular year, if you are that sort of a brand or your media spends are curtailed, then should you be having a separate media buying agency? No, perhaps you can combine the mandate of your advertising agency and your media buying agency, for instance, you know, so those no. or your marketing technology contracts which are there you know which is where the whole tools conversation uh, and streamlining sort of comes in okay reduce or postpone those obligations that do not bring value immediately okay. or even come off as a tone deaf in the current environment these are some of the specifics that clients and agencies have to do I hope this answers Abhishek's question and before we get to the I'll, I'll take a pause here uh, and uh, ask if there are a couple of questions and then go to the video and perhaps after the video we can end. We have about a 10 minute video. So I'll stop sharing. And uh, yeah, any questions from anyone? So this budget's going down uh, in, in terms of anything, which is I think uh, not just in the month of March, it has actually started from the year, year starting. Right. So. Anyway, it was going down in a lot of economic, uh, you know, scaling down towards advertising part, whether it is experiential industry or whether it is uh, now we are seeing a lot of digital also getting, uh, you know, uh, changing in the plans. Uh, so we cannot blame completely COVID. Uh, COVID is actually a, you know, a second stage of cutting down, uh, you know, a lot of other things. Uh, yeah. Likewise, if we see uh, the lot of technology being used and a lot of safety concerns needs to be taken any kind of if you're doing any kind of uh, campaigns, supposedly if you want to shoot a digital content also, I'm seeing it is just not normal because PPE kits, these and that, you know, people need to use. So that is that has been extra cost. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so uh, how how we are looking at tomorrow if if any kind of activation if you plan to do or any kind of digital content. So is a brand also open to do, or, you know, such kind of consider, considering about these all kind of precautions needs to be taken or they just want to be, uh, you know, stringed on, on the kind of budgets, you know, the, 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 the which is coming to the agency. So uh, Suresh, again, depends on brand to brand. Again, if you are in a survival mode and if the spend that you're going to do is not going to bring in immediate value and you're in survival mode, then you might just postpone it and might just not do it at that point in time, right? 
uh, then there is a go between way which is saying that i'm not going to spend anything on shoots etc right what i will do is i will have user generated content let me string a story and with the help of the agency i reach out to the subjects and say shoot these parts and send it to me and then i do an efficient editing job so that you know that's I'm a bit all i've done uh, one of the tvc uh, you know it was completely shot by few families inside their house by you know phones so that is going to be encouraged rather than doing that is going to be yes that is going to be encouraged that is going That's to be nice. done yes and if you have to do it then of course safety will have to come first and you will have to do that so it depends on different stages right that's fair any other questions arish ashwin ron what are there harish is there vikram any questions i think ujwal ujwal is attending us first time ekta has one question from her ekta you can talk yes ekta hello ma'am uh, ma'am my question is like uh, you talked about building resilience into the company so what uh, other ways companies are coming up uh, for the employees so that they stay i mean focused and uh, like because everyone is working from home so what kind of resilience resilience they are coming up with so different people are doing different kinds of things right and uh, again like i said the principles remain the same let's take some examples i already gave you the example of flipkart a flow flipkart is ensuring that you know, they ensure downtime for and the people don't get burnt out right both the clients uh, the client side as well as the agency okay uh, mm-hmm. let's look at agent pains where most of the brands have uh, either done salary cuts or some redundancy or retrenchment asian pains is one of the handful of companies which has actually paid more to their employees they have given them out of turn kind of you know salary hikes to say that we value you you know during this pandemic right so that's what asian pains is doing right which is great now everyone might not have the kind of balance sheet and pnl to be able to take the decision that asian pains has taken which by the way requires financial uh, you know strength but also will you know will to do it right so some others might have the will but might not have the financial stability to do it right what are those organizations doing i think organizations are doing a whole lot of recognition as well right there is a uh, dove which uh, you know at at this time soaps are selling but dove has always stood for inner strength in our beauty that is what their core is right and dove put out a very beautiful video which is hailing all the essential workers you know people who are working in grocery shops people who are the delivery boys you know people who drive trucks and people who are doctors and nurses etc and you will you so you so you just made those people feel important right right and now an agency which is working on it on this kind of a content thing from an agency side you know thinks that wow i'm doing something meaningful what i'm doing is not just uh, you know resulting in more cash register ringing sales etc but i'm doing something meaningful something purposeful right and of course it has a wonderful impact and a very motivational impact on the recipient of this kind of communication so i think people are doing different things brand are doing different things which is from recognition to financial motivation to ensuring that their you know downtime is taken care of to a lot a lot of reskilling you know a lot of uh, companies like uh, like the tash group like the tata group is also reskilling the employees you know at this point in time and saying this is the time that you spend in gaining the new skills which will come to good effect once uh, you know life is back to normal so so they are imparting them with new life skills that they need etc so i think different brands are doing different things but all these are things which go towards building resilience into people and once people are resilient and strong uh, then obviously they 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 make and build resolute organizations as well yeah great yeah. good so at this moment i want to go and show you the video okay okay give me a sec let me know once i play whether you can watch, watch it and hear it both Yeah, we can hear it. Team this year start with the observation that the only thing that is constant in our industry is change. Our prediction is that by 
companies that have fully embraced marketing speed as a competitive advantage will be outperformed. We expect those who break down silos use agile principles and immerse daily in real-time feedback with their most valuable audiences will do better work, attract better talent, and generate strong results. When we talk about speed, we're not talking about legs running faster, hands typing or drawing faster, or mouth speaking faster. We're talking about the ability to react to your consumers and your competitors. The key element of speed is pulling out more creativity that humans value. For years, we have heard from C-level clients their concern that the pace of change externally far exceed the pace of change internally. Actually, this is often the number one or two response to the question, what keeps you up at night? With COVID, the concern has taken a big leap. We've seen two years worth of digital transformation in only two months. The unprecedented pace of change includes behavioral shifts to more digital commerce from physical retail shopping, much more time spent with digital media, and significant cost decreases in digital media as a result of advertising spend declines. At the same time, the 20 years shifts from traditional retail to digital commerce took a massive leap over the past three months category after category. Even more interesting, it is likely that this one-time shift will stick, actually, in many categories. Look at how satisfied people are with the e-commerce channel in categories such as apparel, where many bought online for the first time, or even hygiene, where consumers are actually enjoying a better experience. Although COVID may be a haunting generation event, right? so there are other trends that will also accelerate the pace of change. Environmental crisis from Australian fires to US hurricanes to rising seas everywhere, kilo wasps, waters by pressures and more and more. As we look to 2030, an even bigger issue is attracting and retaining talented people. Who wants to work for a big, slow, hierarchical organization that scan the data sources and do not empower small team, but instead have bureaucracy for every functioning board? Talented marketing staff will be excited by gig platforms. They will become more flexible, while at the same time, less loyal to one employer. How many of you believe this linear process will survive in the next decade? So yes, a lot more is coming at us. And it's pretty clear actually that it's time to learn to surf the waves of change instead of building sea walls. To be fit in 2030, we require us to embrace change differently and full up. We hypothesize that making speed of change a strategic goal, not a sideshow, will be a key factor separating leaders from laggards. That speed should manifest in three ways. This is about big organizations going to market in new ways that de-risk the resource requirements while generating solid projections of future potential. Digital is not a media channel. It's a smart way of working. Prototypes of imperfections. Think of the agility between two types of boats. Large businesses can fall into the trap of putting a scale goal in front of a good idea. The thousands of fast-growing insurgents tend to start with a better product, a good idea, and worry about scale later. There is a lesson here. Big companies are learning and winners will become good at balancing investment and scale 
ideas and new events using low cost, agile, test and learn methods to quickly assess risk. We see more consumer product brands using DTC data and e-commerce platform to test and iterate ideas quickly before worrying about whether Tesco or Walmart will accept the item in thousands of stores. Think of our archetypes. Mad Men, the celebrity CMO conjuring brilliance, all top-down decision-making, story goals and ideas marching up and down the chain of comments in the agency silos, then across clients, then up and down the hierarchies, true madness. This is about trusting a team of several to invent better ideas than few powerful overlords. Smaller empowered teams, branding, marketing is a big asset. It's a big plus to the way this industry has worked. Winners will figure out how to strike to write balance between tapping experience and wisdom and generating better ideas fast. At the same time, too many in our creative industry dismiss Agile as an IT thing. Research in our just published main book, Doing Agile Right, shows that not only does Agile drive better business results, but Agile is relevant behind the technology development of companies and agencies. More leaders are coming to appreciate that Agile is about trusting a team to invent better ideas rather than a few potential overloads. The senior executive has valuable contribution, but as a servant leader rather than a command worker. Bain research shows that there are many reasons why smaller brands are capturing more growth than bigger ones. Having a noticeable better product is a big part of it, but also their small and power team. As they have some roles sourced internally, some externally from agencies or gig platforms such as Geneco or Market to Hire. The point is no longer to manage those team, but to unleash them through agile methods. The team is continuously stimulated by audiences with no variable, reads the signals that come back, and optimizes with real-time learning. Another advantage of empowering teams is how much we love it, actually. Think about the biggest donors in your career. What we often hear about is being excited about an idea, about a role model only to have to march it back and forth to a client or boss office, only to have it with will drill down into something less than great. This fifth key element in driving more speed in marketing is about building real-time measurement and predictive capabilities. Going back to what separate marketing leaders from laggards, one characteristic is embracing customer measurement, creating a loop that sends signals from the external world back to the team, rather than one way that ends. As cookies are progressively replaced by new measurement forms, such as PI data going forward, advertisers will land the imperative for data to sit in their own systems. KPIs will be shared across silos or geared towards better audience outcomes. Recall all that data locked in silo report, both inside different media functions at an agency and inside different client functions. Metrics and measurements, they sound like the most uncreative elements of all, right? But here's a flip. Would you rather get fast feedback from the people you're trying to engage, surprise and delight? Or would you prefer get a report back a couple of months later? Always learning what matters to the audience and what does not matter. We've packed many ideas into this 15 minutes together and now we want to capture the key thoughts as we gaze together out of 2030. Our hypothesis is simple. Marketing teams that operate at a much greater speed and who achieve 
the same speed internally as the pace of change in the real world, will generate more profitable growth than those who don't speed up. The practical idea is to generate that speed and growth and to attract the best people all threefold. One is act as if 2030 is here today. Look forward, not back. Clearly see the rapid changes on the horizon and make decisions now based on that future certainty rather than slight variations of the past two years. Second, launch your speed boats. Use new or virtual and low cost testing methods. Learn more than others. Empower small teams instead of managing them. Eliminating the idea of managing and instead fully embracing the agile methods. Find opportunities to bring in close real-time measurements and move to predictive analytics. Bring in your data house and get very good at using it every hour, every day to continuously improve than in the past. Thanks for your time and maybe all be back on the beach next year to continue gazing forward together, feeling off the energy from each other in person. Really looking forward to it. Okay. So it's a slightly long video, but I thought it sums up really, really well. And if I can just sum up, which you already summed up is uh, agility. Uh, you know, working forward with speed is going to be the differentiator, is going to be the deal clincher for both clients and agencies. And if you have an agency which is pulling you back, then a client cannot deliver and therefore you have to work as a team both ways. And a client has delivered something, and the, uh, you know, agency is delivered and client is not responding, is sitting on it, you know, procrastinating doesn't work and that's why you have to work as a team. Launch your speed boats. I love this analogy, okay? And this, what it means is that you can only launch your speed boats if you are secure, and if you let your teams perform to their positions of strength, right, both on client and agency side, empower, not manage, you know, no longer management, right? Um, and then last, measure real-time feedback because our world is changing. Our world is changing every minute, uh, and therefore we need to respond to that ecosystem. So I think that in a crux is, uh, is, is what will, you know, hold us in good stead from 2021 to 2030. With that, I'll just rest my case and open it up for any question answers any more questions that is oh that's that's very clear and uh, <clears throat> that's a beautiful session uh, just this seriously i really enjoyed it a lot of learnings and uh, new things learning uh, now we more talking about it takes me more talking about life rather than just imposing things but the way you putting across whether it is agency whether it is uh, client side, we need to work as a team. That's really wonderful. Thank you so much. Seriously, thank you so much. Thank you. Guys, any more, please, questions? One or two, we can take it up. Uh, Somebody is thanking. Okay, no problems. I think we're already touching seven. Uh, any questions, we can take it on the mail, I suppose. Uh, you can share the presentation. It is really nice. I would love, love to have the presentation. Please. Yes, any, I'll share it with you. Any I'll students share. would love to have it. They can actually, you know, can connect. And a uh, few of them like to uh, blog about this webinars. I think uh, we, are, we are sharing. Yeah, yeah. So that is also will help. Uh, second, if any, if, if we are ending this, then we can have a one picture. If everybody can open. And there is one question coming up. The one question. We can... I think, yeah, yeah. Ashwan also has a question. Ashwan, you want to have a question, please? I, I yeah, ask you. Uh, Good evening, Ashwan. Good evening, sir. Good evening, ma'am. Uh, the question is like, automobile industry, while selling, it have come through, like, uh, it's recently getting into experience, experiential marketing, whereas the, you know, it's, it's encouraging a lot much test drive things, sort of things to get more sales. But now it has to break it there. It has to stop it there. It needs to search for a new, uh, you know, disruption, but how do you see this? I mean, more, moreover, the shoots happening on uh, the advertisements they give up, it's all more outdoor. So it's all uh, it's all about experience over there. Not just that, uh, again, uh, I would like to put up one more point, which uh, Miss Germina have told us regarding uh, the perfumes and, and the perfumes in the retail stores. 
it was more experiential uh, actually she came up with a brilliant idea of suggesting a uh, one gram packet one gram sachets of you know the perfumes the uh, the creams you use you know that kind of things are good for perfumes but what about automobiles how do you see automobiles in this space so i think all those scale budgets those shoes of you know doing it in seychelles or mauritius or whatever they won't have the budget to do that okay so that you know showing the sea on one side and cruising you know you know that will have to change i think a whole lot of use of again digital computer generated graphics you know cgi will come to the fore a whole lot of cgi will have to be done a whole lot of those simulations will have to be done and just like you know you try to give people an experience of how it is to sit in a uh, you know in in a in a space uh, you know uh, capsule you're not actually sitting there but you do that in a flight simulator kind of a thing i think that will have to be done in a car a test drive etc you know so that you are at home you use virtual reality you use some of these things and try and give as close an experience to to the kind of comfort and to the kind of cruise that your car will provide rather than actually you know uh, risking people's safety etc with test drives etc and having those people so i think this is how brands will these automotive brands will have to think yeah. i think right. amazon amazon picked up all the cg ads now even on tv series as so yeah. on digital yeah so they are completely using the graphic designing or kind of a ads which is yeah. which is actually very neat and very budgeted right. Right. yeah so that is more encouraging encouraging right. now yeah super any more questions for just the now guys i think we're good yeah yeah uh can i can i ask everyone to please keep their cameras up so we can have a group screenshot Yeah, one sec. All right, that's nice. Gagandeep, don't be lazy, man. Get up. Ha! Uh, I know you've you've been tired of sitting at home. Yeah, one more. Thank you, Jersey. Thanks a lot for the session and. Uh, we'll share the pictures with you and guys thank you so much for being part of this tomorrow uh, we have uh, uh, babita barua session that is uh, on design thinking people who would like to attend please you will have your uh, meeting ids and uh, for the students i'm talking about later on parts everything is available on our website you can just log in and register thank you so much thanks jasdeep thank, thank you so much Thank you. All right. Thanks. Bye bye. Thanks. Bye. Bye. See you. Bye. Thanks. Bye. Thank you, guys. Thank you, sir. Thank you, man, for the session. Thank, Thank you. you. Bye. Thank you.